okay shall we start guys yes sir yes sir yeah so tetrahedral complex we have this uh, kind of structure right the ligands are present at the corner of the tetrahedral we are going to see the splitting in orbitals how the orbital splits in tetrahedral complex okay so obviously you see the bond angle is 109 degree 28 minutes along any of these lines we cannot assume any axis right but if axis is there it will be something like this it is present at 90 degree like this suppose this is the axis we have xyz just a rough uh, diagram i am trying to draw right at 90 degree so obviously what we can say the ligands are approaching the metal uh it is not along the axis but it is in between the axis right in between the axis you see so obviously the non axial orbital that you have in this case the non axial orbital experience more repulsion and hence it goes to the higher energy level so if you look at the splitting in this orbital the splitting is like this see cft tetrahedral is just the ulta reverse of octahedral complex all the you know the axis is same uh, y axis and x axis the t2g orbital goes to the higher energy level and eg comes down to the lower energy level okay everything is same this x is and all everything is same and in this again if you have, if you have to distribute the electron all those things you have to consider field strong field unstool unstool right energy gap everything but those things are not there okay you don't have to think about all this if it is there you have to consider like that now the splitting here is given as delta t you see t stands for tetrahedral this is delta t okay and there is a relation of delta o and delta t and this relation is established experimentally and the relation is delta t for tetrahedral is equals to 4 by 9 times of delta Four by nine times of delta. This is experimentally determined. No proof, nothing. Many times they have asked this question, right? So you must have to keep this in mind. From this only you can understand easily that delta t is uh, less than delta. This is also you can conclude. So yes tell me so this relation is for a particular pair of com I mean for the a particular right. complex yeah so but then how will one complex have octahedral and tetrahedral see if it forms like no oh, um see we can have no k3 fecl6 forms k4 fecl6 forms right means two different kinds of arrangement if it is there then we have this kind of uh, relation tetrahedral complex and, and if you know the different uh, uh, ligands obviously if the ligands are so different in the two different molecules then we cannot compare these two right because the different molecules are there but yes if you have uh, some compounds like um, uh, for example if i take uh, an example uh, fe f4 we can have different charge on this no on the complex ion we can have different charge on this with this or fe f3 okay. so this charge may be differ on this and then it can show the uh, you know the complex whether it is tetrahedral octahedral or whatever okay so got it okay. so this is tetrahedral complex right every other thing is same you don't have to think much about it like you know because we have discussed a lot of things in octahedral complex those things we can apply here also but it, that is not there in this right so just let it be now if you have a square planar complex then how the orbitals split did you draw this all of you so one second
So what is that on the top non-axial orbital? Where? So non-axial non orbital right. experience more repulsion. Okay. Sir. Not a square planar. Okay, in a square planar, uh, obviously you see the structure is this. And since it is square planar, so all the ligands are along this line, right? There is no ligands along DZ square orbit. Metal we have here. So one thing is sure that the orbital dx square y square experience the maximum repulsion, right? Like in octahedral, the repulsion of dx square y square and dz square is same, but here dz square won't have similar repulsion like dx square y square we have. So the T2g orbital also is splits into two parts. Sorry, eg orbital also is splits into two parts. And to T2G also is fixed into two parts because of the different repulsion and different orbitals. So let me show you the, the splitting here, then you will understand it how it happens. So square pyramidal, the splitting is like this. You see. see what happens here since the ligands is approaching the metal along this this two orbital dx square y square so it this one obviously have the maximum repulsion so this is the maximum energy right in between this two if you compare dxy and dz square right so dxy orbital is in xy plane and ligands are approaching along xy plane only that's why the dx square dxy will have more repulsion than dz square dz square and dxz yz you see obviously it is an xz plane and it is in yz plane right perpendicular to xy plane but dz square you know this orbital has an electron cloud in the xy plane yes or no yes this is dz square it has the electron cloud in the xy plane and that's why this orbital experience slightly more repulsion than dxz and dyz Right? Hence the splitting is this. They haven't asked question on all this, but yes, you should know the at least the order of this. Which orbital should have the maximum and will have the maximum energy, which has the minimum energy. This thing at least. One minute.
Z ligands along this line, we do not have ligands. Right, in comparison to the octahedral complex. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the first part of this chapter, that is coordination compound, is almost done. We are left with only last, uh, you know, part of it, the first part. Then after this, we'll start with uh, uh, isomerism in coordination compound, the last part of this chapter. So we are left with only organometallic compound. Organometallic compound, if you remember, we have discussed it in organic chemistry also. When we are doing uh, Grignard reagent, I said that this is the, this is an organometallic compound. Organometallic compounds are those compounds in which we have the bond between carbon and metal, okay? So there are three types of organometallic compounds, right? RMGX is one type. We have a specific name for that. Name for that. I'll tell you what. So first of all, I write down. It's, it's just a theory. You just need to know a few structures and two names. That is it. Nothing much. You have to you have to keep in mind here. Uh, right now, these are the compounds in which. These are the compounds in which carbon metal bond is present. These are the compounds in which carbon metal bond is present. This is classified into three categories. Okay, carbon metal bond is present, classified into three categories. The first type we have, sigma bonded complex. Sigma bonded complex, okay. Uh, simple, in this type of complex, the, there is a sigma bond between the carbon and the metal, okay. So carbon and metal join with the sigma bond. Carbon, metal, are attached with with a sigma bond, and hence we call it a sigma bonded complex. Sigma bond. The example we have: RMGX Grignard reagent. We can have uh, Al2, CH3, 6, this is also sigma bonded complex, right? Electron deficient Al CH3 dimerizes. This is the example we have. Next exam, next type we have pi bonded complex. In pi bonded complex, obviously pi electrons are involved with metal. Okay, pi electrons are involved with metal. These are the complex. These are the complex in which in which the metal ion The metal ion is bonded with with pi electrons, and we can have pi electrons of alkene, benzene, alkyne, and any other molecules. Okay, pi electron clouds, pi electron clouds. For example, you see these are structures that I'm going to draw. These structures are important. Okay, they have asked these things in the exam. Okay. You see this, we have a five-membered ring. 
five membered ring metal is iron and this side we have another five membered ring this pi electron cloud it donates to this metal this is second this is the bonding we have okay this compound we call it as ferrocene all these name you have to memorize ferrocene we also represent this as metal is iron so we write here this one see this we write here fe then a greek letter eta e t a we write eta dash for one molecule we have c5h5 the structure of the ligand this is the ligand we have c5h5 we have two times so hold two and we'll write a number on the top of it eta that number is the number of carbon atom in the ligand okay that is five carbon so five we have here. once in need they have asked this question they have given the structure and eta to the power x they have written x eta to the power x and the question was what is the value of x okay x here or the number here is the number of carbon atom in the ligand carbon atom you can say or number of atoms in the ligand eta to the power pi the name is ferrocene representation is this one more example we have in fact two we have pi electrons of benzene you see this with chromium and this attached with benzene okay this we call it as dibenzene chromium dibenzene chromium and the uh, uh, representation of this is cr for chromium eta to the power 6 c6 h6 Okay. Another example, you see. So we have a cyclic compound, platinum. Here we have chlorine, chlorine, chlorine. Metal is this, and this metal, the ligand, the another, the fourth ligand is this one, carbon with two hydrogen, CH two. This is the carbon with two hydrogen CH2. Okay. This is a complex part. And K plus K plus. Okay. The name of this compound is Jesus salt. G salt. Okay, important and the representation is the cation first metal is platinum cl3 three chlorine atom and this is eta c2h4 this is it so the pi bonded complex that you have or the ligands which pi electrons contains here you see cl3 three ligands i have written simply but the pi electron ligands we used to represent with this eta
Dan. third type of uh, organometallic compound we have and uh, we call it as sigma and pi bonded compounds sigma and pi bonded compounds Right, and these are the complex. These are the complex in which these are the complex in which the bond between the bond between the metal and carbonyl compound carbonyl group the bond between the metal and carbonyl group is present this is basically the metal carbonyl compound in that only we have sigma and pi bonded complex there right the oxidation state of the metal is zero right this one is also important on this also they have asked question many times okay right on the oxidation state of the metal is zero for example you see nico4 nico4 since the ligand is neutral so oxidation state is zero crco6 crco6 metal carbonyl compound okay in this type of compound only the sigma and pi bonded complex we call it Now the important point here is I'll give you one note here. On this note, they have asked question many times in the exam. We generally they ask which statement is correct regarding this kind of complex like this. Okay. So in this note, everything is there. You can understand it. I'll explain the note also later on once you finish it. Write down first. In this type of compound. metal and carbon atom in this type of compound metal and carbon atom contains both sigma and pi character both sigma and pi character next line sigma bond is formed sigma bond is formed by bond is formed by the donation of lone pair of electron by the donation of lone pair of electrons donation of lone pair of electrons of carbon
lone pair of electrons of carbon to the vacant orbital lone pair of electrons of carbon to the vacant orbital of metal carbon to the vacant orbital of metal and pi bond forms and pi bond forms due to the back bonding and pi bond forms due to the back bonding of a fully filled d orbital of a fully filled d orbital to to the vacant anti bonding pi orbital of car of carbonyl group to the vacant anti bonding pi orbital to the vacant anti bonding pi orbital of the carbonyl group excuse me sir yes sir if a bond is uh, being formed by the donation of electrons uh, from carbon then how is it a sigma bond i mean uh, is it a quadrant bond did you copy this okay oh. yes sir okay so you see how it happens first of all you see this carbonyl group co how many electrons it has 8 plus 6 we have 14 electrons right and for 14 electrons if you draw the uh, configuration according to mot molecular orbital theory this would be sigma 1s sigma star 1s sigma 2s sigma star 2s pi 2py pi 2pz sigma 2px then pi star 2py pi star 2pz then sigma star to p x this is for n less than equal to 14 if it is greater than 14 14 to 20 then we have to interchange this this will come over here and this two will come this side this two we need to interchange that is only difference we have okay now since we have 14 electrons if you fill this 14 electrons with 2 4 Six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. You see this pi. First of all, it starts. These are anti-bonding orbitals, right? Anti-bonding pi orbitals, which is vacant. Anti-bonding pi orbitals. So the metal. that donates electron back bond in back bonding it donates electron into the pi star orbital anti bonding orbital so if you look at the metal uh, you know which has the pi electron suppose i'm just rough diagram i'm drawing suppose one orbital is this another orbital is this and uh,
this is metal right one electron pair of metal which involves in back bonding and carbon monoxide is this uh, sorry carbonyl group carbon monoxide this c triple bond o oxygen has one lone pair and the carbon has one lone pair in its orbital one lone pair of carbon and this is the pi star orbital anti bonding orbital Okay, so the sigma bond forms for that carbon donates its lone pair of electron into the vacant orbital of the metal. This forms a sigma bond, and pi bond forms since it is a pi star anti bonding orbital. So from the metal, the d electron donates its pair of electron into the vacant anti bonding pi orbitals of this carbonyl group. this forms the pi bond so pi bond forms by the back bonding of pair of electron of metal into with the anti bonding pi orbitals of carbon uh, you know carbonyl group and sigma bond forms by the donation of lone pair of electrons of carbon to the vacant orbital of metal so this is we have in the carbonyl compound sigma pi complex yes you tell me now Yes, sir. Good. Yes. So, both are actually coordinate bonds, only. Yes. Okay. Coordinate bond are like no. Is a type of covalent bond only, no? Yes, sir. Right. So yes. why they have done this changes here because the most of the compounds which involves coordinate and covalent bond they have the similar properties that's why they have merged the two yes got it so this the note that i have given you on that they have asked question many times in jee also which statement is correct or which statement is you know incorrect like that so all these whatever we have done there are so many questions possible like small small points when it is high spin complex when it is low spin complex for low spin complex what is the nature of the ligand weak ligand or a strong ligand all these are kind of questions they have asked many times okay so this is the first part of this uh, you know chapter uh the the second part which is the last part of this chapter we have which is that is nothing but the isomerism in coordination compound okay so coordination compound shows both kind of isomerism structural and stereo the stereo part is the only which is important right but they have asked question from structural also in stereo we have geometrical as well as optical isomerism possible right so we'll start with this next write down isomerism in coordination compound Sir, I had one small doubt in the previous. Sir, why can't it be? Why can't the oxidation number not be zero? Which one? Where? For the metal carbonyl bond. Oxidation is by complex. Yes, sir. I'm asking why can't it be zero? Why? I mean, why can it be? Why does it not be zero? Ah, uh, why does not? Ah, uh, see, uh, NiCO. I have given you the example. NiCO four, correct? This is a complex. Yes. Metal carbonyl compound we have CrCO6. There's no charge, you see. This ligand is neutral. There's no charge on the complex. It is stable also. Nickel. How many electrons? What is the atomic number of nickel? Twenty. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Yes. Eight. Four ligands, right? Four into two, eight yes. electrons it provides. Twenty-eight plus eight, thirty-six. it is stable why why you know without any charge only it is stable means it is not so but what if it's something else like you had given example that you know said like vco6 no, or something uh, that is different we have metal carbonyl compounds plus some other ligands also present no yes sir is it 
So that is a different case. Here we have metal and carbonyl compound. That is okay. That's why you see I have given the examples of this tool. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so isomerism in coordination compound. Fine. So two types of isomerism, I'm just I know, I'm not going into detail of all this because you know what is isomerism and all. The two types of isomerism it shows is structural and stereo, right? So first we'll see is structural isomerism. Here also we have certain you know definitions and then examples of it. Stereo isomerism we have to see how to draw the different different isomers and how to find out the given the drawn structure is different from the other structure. There we have to understand a bit. But here just we have definitions and, and then examples of that like we had in the uh, uh, in the isomerism chapter, okay? So the first types of structural isomerism we have, we call it as ionization isomerism. Definition, write down. Very simple definition. On ionization, it gives different ions, are called ionization isomers. Basic thing is same, like the structural formula must be same. Without that, we cannot even imagine of isomerism, right? So the formula must be same, the molecular formula of the compound, right? If they, if on ionization, they give different ions, then they call it ionization isomerism. Okay, write down. These isomers have same molecular formula. These isomers have same molecular formula and produces when the ligands and the outer atoms means outside the coordination sphere. The ligands and the outer atoms are interchange. For example, we have CONH3, 4H2. Cl2Br, okay. On ionization, it gives Br minus and this plus. If I write down the another molecule of this, which is CH3, NH, CO, NH3, 4, ClBr, and one chlorine outside. So both has the same molecular formula, but on ionization, they give different ions and hence these are ionization isomers. Okay, second type is hydrate isomerism. Obviously this phenomenon is isomerism. Okay, uh, hydrate or we also call it as solvent isomerism. Right down, this is a special type of ionization isomerism. This is a special type of ionization isomerism in which the water molecules are involved. in which water molecules are involved.
सी आर एच टू ओ सिक्स सी एल थ्री आउटसाइड प्रेजेंट एंड सी आर एच टू ओ फाइव सी एल सी एल टू डॉट एच टू सो वॉटर मॉलिक्यूल इज प्रेजेंट आउटसाइड ओके सो दिस इज हाइड्रेट आइसोमेरिस ओके और सॉल्वेंट आइसोमेरिस सर कुड़ी को बैक जस्ट मैंने यस सर थैंक यू सर ओके नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज लिंकेज आइसोमेरिज्म थर्ड वन this is possible with ambident ligand simply the linkage is different okay write down this type of isomerism this type of isomerism is theoretically possible is theoretically possible theoretically possible in any coordination compound in any coordination compound containing containing an ambident ligand containing an ambident ligand okay example very simple one co nh3 Five NO two two plus and CO NH three five O N O two plus linkage isomers. Oxygen is the donor atom. Nitrogen is the donor atom. Fourth one. coordination isomerism coordination isomerism write down the compound which has the compound with ha which has which has both cationic and anionic complex ions which has both cationic and anionic complex ions the compound which has both cationic and anionic complex ions shows this type of isomerism shows this type of isomerism and this is obtained by uh sorry and this is and and these isomers are obtained by and these isomers are obtained by by the interchange of ligand in both 
ions. Interchange of ligand in both ions. Okay. For example, we have CuNH3 4 PtCl4. This is the complex. Could you tell me the charge on this complex and this complex? Sir, C1 plus 2 plus 2 minus 2. Plus 2 and minus 2. Because the total charge is 4, we'll divide equally plus 2 minus 2. Now, if you write down the coordination isomers of this, what you do is exchange the ions here, the ligands, sorry. Cl here and PtCl3 NH3. This is the another molecule we have. Here we have plus 1 charge. And here we have minus one charge. Total charge will be plus two and minus two always. Okay. Further, if you write down CuNH3 two Cl2 PtCl2 NH3, Cu NH3, Cl3, PtCl NH3, full price. Cu Cl and Pt. NH3 4. Okay, so here the charge would be 0 and 0. Zero, 0 this uh, further here the charge would be minus 1 and here it would be plus 1 here it is minus 2 and plus 2 like this we have the charge okay so all these possible combination we can draw but out of this five combination out of this five combination this one is not possible This one is not possible. Oh, whatever. Wait. Why this one is not possible, I'll tell you. Because the charge on the ions is zero. And there is no attraction between the two part of it, cation and anion. If the charge is zero, this is also independent, this is also independent. There's no attraction. So this as a whole, it's not a compound now. Right? Because there is no interaction between the two parts here. That's why this we cannot consider. This is not the possible uh, isomers. The answer for this one, one, two, three, four isomers are possible. Got it? Good pass. We'll write down one more. Last one. Sir, in the actual compound, will they exist as mixtures? No, we are just drawing it. Like, you know, we exchange the actual compound is this only. Whatever is written, that will be the compound. It won't exchange. It is not like isomers, it's not like resonance that things get, you know, changes from here and there. Shifting of you know, ligands is not possible on its own. But if you write down the structure like this, it is possible. Like, we're talking about isomers, so we can write down the Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So one last uh, type here. We'll finish it. Write down next one. That is polymerization isomerism.
polymerization isomerism. Write down. This type of isomerism exists This type of isomerism exists in compounds having in compounds having same stoichiometric composition, same stoichiometric composition, but different molecular composition, same stoichiometric composition. But different molecular composition. Same stoichiometric composition, but different molecular composition. Pt NH3 Cl2, and you see this one Pt NH3 4 complex part, and Pt Cl4 complex part. This too, if you see the ratio of platinum NH3 and Cl in the two compound. It is 1 is to 2 is to 2 and here it is 2 is to 4 is to 4 which eventually comes out to be 1 is to 2 is to 2. So this kind of ratio if it is same different molecular formula but stoichiometry composition is same. So this compound is R polymerization isomers of nature. Did you get it? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is it for structural isomerism. Here we have only definitions and then you know, the examples of it. Next class. We'll finish this chapter, we'll do studio isomerism, that is very important. We'll finish this and we'll start another chapter, okay? So module, center module you can solve. I'll share tomorrow, I'll share uh, one PDF also on this, which you can try, okay? Yeah, anything else guys? Okay, thank you guys. Take care. Thank, thank you, sir. sir. Thank you, thank sir. You, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Happy teachers, sir. Thank you, sir.